In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you why I do what I do in a live head-to-head -head matchup of Madden 21. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I just want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you're new to the channel, my channel is all about helping people become better Madden players. And so if you're looking to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you to click the subscribe button at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. It's completely free to subscribe, and it just allows you to be able to stay up to date with the latest tips and strategies right here on the channel. Now, in this video, we are specifically going to be sharing with you how I like to run the bunch tight end on the offensive side of the ball and the nickel three. 335 wide on the defensive side of the ball so much so that we're actually going to be sharing with you a little bit of a deep dive into two specific plays that we're going to cover in this video now if you want to get the exact offense and defense that i ran in this video with all of the setups and everything that you need to be able to run it effectively you can get that guide in the description both guides are linked down below my offense and my defense the exact offense and the exact defense that you see me running in this video, I have complete ebook tutorials on in the description. Now in this video, like I said, I'm talking about two specific plays. I've actually um, talked a little bit about this before, but I believe that there's power and positive constraints. And so this is what I call a little bit of a development game. It's a, it's a game that you go, um, a way that you can play Madden to really help, I think, develop you as a uh, passer, and as a defensive player as well. And really what it comes down to is execution. We talk a lot on this channel about how it is super, super important to uh, simplify. It's important to simplify to use the 80-20 rule. And the 80-20 rule simply states that 20 or 80 20% 20 of the inputs produce 80% of the output. So for example, out of 80% of your best performances in Madden 21 or your best play calls in Madden 21, it actually only comes from 20% of the plays. And so um, what it gets at here is that is there's power in less, right? We want to do less, but we want to do it better. And we want to do that in a disciplined way. And so one of the ways that I will do this from time to time is I will actually go into um, a game of Madden 21 and I will simply run the same play pretty much the entire game. And the reason why is because I want to see what they do to stop me. What do they do to stop me? And so we might use minor adjustments. We might use little variations of the same play. But in essence, it is going to be pretty much the same exact concept the entire game. And so on the offensive side of the ball, I'm actually running the bunch tight end, as you guys can see in this video, uh, the PA boot over, kind of learning that play at a high level. On defense, I'm actually going to be running the cover four uh, quarters. You've heard, probably heard me talk about this a lot, um, but we're specifically running the cover four quarters. The reason why we do this is not just because we want to like you know run the same glitch play all game and you know that and and do that. But what we want to simply do here is number one, we want to prove the concept that you could be very successful only running a handful of plays. Now, there's a little bit of an exception to this when I get in the red zone. Um, we might have to do some different setups, but by and large, we're going to run the same basic play. So it might be PA boot over, the major difference being that we may run it just a little bit differently. So like as you see here, we're not using a skinny pose because due to the, you know, the physical space, we're not able to really do that. So we're going to do, you know, something like this right here. Um, take this little underneath in route to the running back, you know, and then get up field. Or we might run the ball inside the five. Things like that are kind of exceptions to the rule. But as a general rule, for the majority of this game, when I pass the ball, or really, um, you know, pretty much not even when I pass the ball, but when I'm, you know, in any down and distance, you know, in front of the 10 yard line, I'm going to be running boot over. I'm going to be running P boot over with consistency. And I think what you're going to find out in this video as you watch this is um, there's actually a lot of power in this. As you can see right here, I was getting on the board seven to nothing because what it does is is it forces you to get better at execution. When you simplify what you do, it forces you to do what you do better. When you simplify what you do, it forces you to do what you do better. Now in the guide, we go through the entire offense step by step and we break down everything for you. So we teach you the power play, the counter play, the constraint three plays, the plays that you can have one play touchdowns against cover four, cover three, cover two, uh, cover one, cover zero, all of the coverages that the defense can run. But in this video, we're choosing, we're choosing to put positive constraints on the offense. We're only going to run one play. And the reason why is not to you know, show off how good the play is. It is to help us as a player 
improve at reading the defense and executing the concept. So as you can see right here, we're not going to do any zone drops on the defensive side of the ball, and we're only going to run one play. We're going to run cover four, show two, from the nickel three through five wide. Now, real quick tip um, is that as you see here at the bottom left there, I was down to one second, so I paused the game. And then I just hit circle. If you look at the bottom left, I'm going to have an additional 15 seconds to be able to make adjustments. Now, the reason, again, that we do this on the defensive side of the ball is it shows us and teaches us how do you adjust to what your opponent is doing when you are basically forced into calling the same play every single time? How do we you know, do certain usering uh, mechanics? How do we do certain run defense shoots? Things like that that you don't really think about when you can just audible over to the man coverage or you can just – you know, run a zone drop or something like that, right? This forces you to have to think how you can actually stop the opponent with match defense, right? With with, with match defense. Um, now, I can make any adjustment out of the cover four show two that I want. So I could man up a guy. I could, I could blitz. I could do all of those things. But I can basically only sit in that play. So I'm going to audible from three through five to three through five wide cover four drop every single play. And then I'm just going to simply focus on, you know, again, executing, executing, executing. I cannot stress to you how important it truly is to just simply execute. And I think you're going to learn that in the course of this video. Now in the defensive guide as well, we talk a lot about um, how do you actually get consistent stops? We have run defense. We have match defense. We have zone drop defenses. We have man defenses. We have blitzing defenses. We have all of those things available for you. Um, but in this specific instance, we're specifically focusing in on match defense and how we run it at a high level. And so these are things that you can do. This is a practice that I do, and I will do this relatively consistently. And the reason why, again, is because I want to be good at executing. I don't just want to be good at, you know, not ex or uh, at, at running a bunch of different plays. Right there, we got burned over the top, so that's something we're going to have to watch out for. Now we know, okay, is solo receiver. He's um, and when you run cover four quarters, see these are things that you don't learn unless you run it against so, a lot of different things because you play regs online or you play money games or you whatever, right? You're going to get a lot of different looks. Um, you're going to get some trips tied in. You're going to get some bunch, but you're also going to get some random stuff as well. Um, and so that that helps you prepare a little bit. And so you know my opponent makes a, a you know a good play off the off the rip there. And really what happened was, you know, I'm going to cover four show two, cover four quarter style defenses. But one of the mis one of the things that you're noticing is that when I press coverage, especially if he's a, you know, three wide receivers to one side and one wide receiver to the other, that one wide receiver is going to be in man to man coverage. So, you know, those are just something some things that we have to be, you know, kind of mindful of. Anyway, getting back to the offensive side of the ball, we're going to be sitting in that boot over again. Again, the most important thing is we want to see what are the adjustments that he makes? How does he make those adjustments? Why, why does he make those adjustments? How do we read and react to those adjustments? Like right here, um, it's something very simple that I'll do a lot. But if I see somebody that likes to crash the line out and contain, then I won't force it too much. So like you saw right there, he crashed his line out and he QB contained rush. The reason why, you know, I just ran forward with that is because that's a gaping hole in a crash line out type of defense. Another thing I'll do, you know, is I'll just sit like this right here. Uh, and right here, you know, got Robert, Mr. Tumnus wide open in the delay fade. But you'll see, like, in that situation, I didn't roll out. Why? Because I'm starting to notice what he's doing. All right, he's crashing his line out. You see how he's getting him way, way out there? You know, that's a little bit of a problem. But anyway, anyway, he's going to sit in that cover one. We're going to take our shot over the top to Devontae Adams. One play touchdown against cover one coverage if if the user stays down too long. And this is the beauty of the boot over. It forces you to choose between the underneath route, the crossing route, and the delayed fade. So again, power in simplifying. There really is power in simplifying. If you are someone that just truly does not believe that you should only run one play a game. I understand that. And what I would tell you to do in that situation, and this is what I tell most people to do whenever they get one of my guides, only run two plays. So go in there with a power play and go in there with a counter play and let that be it and learn how to execute. Put the pressure on yourself. Put the pressure on yourself to learn how to execute. I think it's super, super important. Not very many people do it. 
Um, but the people that do it, I think become pretty daggone good at executing. Again, we want to focus on execution. It is super, super important um, to how we're going to play. And so that's, you know, that's why we do that. So anyways, right here, a little uh, slip screen. We're sticking with our cover four show too. We're making a little bit of an adjustment to that left side out of three wide receivers. If he's in a bunch set like he is, we're being very cautious to that solo receiver. We don't want to give that up. You know, right here, this is kind of the exact play that we got, you know, beat on. We got short side bunch. Um, the reason that short side bunch is significant is because it allows a lot of um, wiggle room over here on the side. Uh, right here, it's kind of scrambling out of the pocket. This quarterback ends up, you know, taking a hit but doesn't doesn't uh, fumble. But anyway, here, same thing. We have to watch out. We really, truly have to watch out for, um, you know, that, that one play touchdown type of potential that he could have. Uh, right here, a little scrambling out again with the quarterback. Again, takes a big hit. and um, But you see how the adjustments start to kind of become more um, – you can get a lot faster at the adjustments when you know what the adjustments are that you have to do. So I already know, like going into it, right, I already know exactly what I have to do, like every single time. It's so like right here I'm just getting in, blowing up the run, easy peasy. He's going to go to a no huddle situation. And we're actually not in a great position. A little fullback slam. Good call by my opponent. Able to just power me. And occasionally, you know what? If someone does that, like, obviously, barring you run, like, run up against someone who's running goal line every play and fullback dive, that's one thing. Or, like, goal line defense, that's another thing. But in general, we want to try to stick with you know one defense uh really to rule and that's really the idea because uh what it does is if, again it just forces you to have to get to know how to actually run it you have to get to know where the vulnerabilities are in the defense because you're going to be running at one you know literally every single play now right there you see get a little bit of a sack situation um again we're in a short side little See, and I've got to watch this. I'm going to go ahead and get over the top, protect that with my guy. He ends up checking down to the back, which is actually not a, not a bad uh, move by him. And it puts him into scoring position. So, again, what you're starting to see is you're starting to see, okay, we're starting to identify some of the weak areas of this defense might be, you know, stopping fullback dive or, you know, whatever it might be, right? That's something that comes with repetition, it comes with simplifying what you're doing. Um, just cannot speak enough to that. Right here, a little slip screen. We're able to blow that up with our user. We're actually going to take a timeout right there. The reason why is because we just want to give ourselves every opportunity. Um, we did get ball first, which is unfortunate. I never, ever like it. Um, I never, ever like it. We're actually really, really slow on our adjustments. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but I never like getting the ball first. Ideally, I would never get the ball first. But unfortunately, I did in this situation uh, right here, rolling out, rolling out, rolling out. And now that's exactly why we take the timeout. So we have third down and 21 now. The ball's on the 32-yard line. And we are running cover show, four show two. Like I said, we are also running a specific version of that defense. It's not just we're just calling it stock. You know what I mean? Like we're making adjustments to this, but we're learning how to do those things. We're learning how to do those things. So like right here. He's going to go with that little – got the soft squad over here, but we also have a deep half. He ends up overthrowing that crosser. He actually had him, but he overthrew him. So that's about as perfect as it can get, right? He's in position now where he's going to have to take a field goal. We're in a position where we can actually go down and at least try to score a field goal um, out of this situation. And again – and I, did he miss that? No, he ended, he ended up making it. Okay. So we got 32 seconds. we got one timeout. Now – Game plan, and here's the thing: when you simplify what your play calling is, it makes it a lot easier to manage the game because you're like, okay, I've got 32 seconds. That means I need to do this, this, and this, right? Um, when you don't do, like, when you're just kind of like trying to figure out what you're going to call all the time, that's when you run into issues. Like, you know, you want to have plays for these situations, obviously, but really, it just comes down to can I execute my offense, right? Can I execute my offense? That's what it comes down to every single time. So, like right here, see how he goes down on it? And unfortunately, we got a nice little under pressure. 
The one issue with boot over is that occasionally the tight end will struggle to release. To me, that's like a little bit of an issue. Um, normally, it doesn't happen whenever you double team an ID. Um, he's doing a little bit of like a weird defense. He's running some, you know, this guy's kind of running some random stuff. Um, and that's why something like this is good because you start to identify, okay, these are, you know, these are the things that he can do to me, right? But right there, tight end release is great. And now, you know, trying to do a little stop and go, trying to get as many yards as we can. And that's going to put us in a pretty good position. Now, right here, you know, we've got first and 10. Um, ideally, we, you know, might run the tight end like a drag route or something. Um, but we're just going to keep it simple, keep it with what we're doing. We're really looking to hit the circle receiver if we at all possibly can. Um, rolling out, rolling out. Perfect. A little rack catch up field, get out of bounds. That's about as perfect as you could possibly draw it up. Obviously, we missed the one read to the tight end. We overthrew him or whatever, but that's perfect. We knew the user was going to be put in a bind. He obviously was. He ended up making probably the right decision as he chose Devontae Adams. He chose to you know try to take the short right away, but then try to take the deep right away. But as you can see, you can't take both away. Whenever you read it correctly, whenever you simplify, and you can actually make the read. Because I, I cannot express to you guys how much I personally, and maybe you haven't struggled with this, but when you play someone that's like a really high caliber player, they will typically move really quickly, right? They will make their reads really quickly. They will throw out, make their decisions. They're, they're very fast decision making. It's one of the big things that separates them. When you're playing someone... And you're, when you're simplifying to the point that you're only running a couple of plays, what it does is, again, it allows you to run them faster because you already kind of have a plan. You already have a plan for what you're going to do. Um, you already have a little bit of a system built. When you're just kind of coming out and picking whatever you want to pick, that's where the problem really lies to me because what happens is this has happened to me and I've watched this happen to other people their decision making gets drastically, drastically um, slowed down. They're not able to make as fast of decisions. They're not able to adjust quickly on the fly. Those are some of the little things that really starts to suffer whenever you, you know, just kind of call random stuff. They just can't execute it as good. And um, that's really the heart of simplifying, honestly. Um, it's so you can focus on the things that you, you know, really, really are going to contribute to the bottom line. And the bottom line is we want to be able to be, you know, on offense, we want to score touchdowns. On defense, we want to, we want to hold our opponent's field goals. That's about as bottom line as you could possibly get. You know, two simple goals. Um, and you see right here, tries to hit us over the top. Now, right there, you know what? I mean, I just don't think that should have been completed. I think that should have been interception, but that is what it is. You know, and you can't be fault the defense. He had a player in position. Um, he just didn't jump very well. So, like right here, I form pro. Probably going to be a run. A little fullback slam. And so you see how we're starting to say, okay. You know, I know that if push comes to shove, um, he's going to run fullback dive. I, I pretty much know that, right? So that's just something that I have to watch out for. Like here, um, running with the quarterback again, ends up scoring a touchdown. And you know what? That's good to him. I mean, that's okay. That's, that's kind of unfortunate, but he is able to score. So now that's going to put us into a 17 to 17 ball game. And honestly, you can't be too upset with the way the defense is played. And you'll start to notice whenever you play people that do this, where they kind of call random stuff, you will notice a pattern goes to slip screen. Then he goes to verticals. Then he goes to flood. Then he goes to uh, wide receiver out, right? There's all these things that he starts to run. You start to kind of identify, okay, these are some commonalities, right? And so, you know, it, as we adjust out of this cover four show too, as we show the same thing, it allows us to really force the issue because there's only a certain couple of things that have been open for him, right? I mean, he's gotten a couple, in my opinion, two streaks that have really, you know, been there for him. And outside of that, you know, the defense has been fine. All right, so back on offense, BA boot over. And he's been kind of sticking with his same strategy too. It's been cover one pretty much every single play. Um, 
and basically it's like he's gonna you know he might jump the crosser and he might jump the you know he might jump the the little drag route those are really his two strategies um the problem with those two strategies number one they're not working too well for him right uh but number two he, he's really not doing anything else right like right here this is a little bit of a, a risky throw, but because I noticed that he's using a linebacker, I knew that that touch pass could get over the top of that really well, and it did right when he changed up to cover four palms, crossing routes wide open, absolute laser from Rodgers. And what you're noticing, I hope, is that there is so much beauty in simplicity. Right? There's a, there's a statement that I really am fond of saying to people, and, and it's basically that perfection is achieved not when there is nothing left to add but when there is nothing left to take away and what we want to do is we want to start with an empty slate we want to start with an empty piece of paper and we only want to add what is absolutely critical to success you have to at least call one play right obviously you can't call you know you can't play a game of madden and just not call play but this is very much a simplicity this is very much a blank piece of paper type of strategy and we we're only calling you know one play on each side of the ball and so you know we've got to be very intentional and understanding because a lot of times people and another random rocket random catch um but a lot of people add before they really know why they're adding that's what i'm really getting at um you you want to know why you're adding stuff why are you adding a counter play what purpose does that serve? What is the defense that is actually going to take away the PA boot over? What is that? Right? It's very you want to get very specific about your if this then that because if you're not specific about it, then what's going to happen is you're just going to kind of do whatever whenever. Like right here, I know he really likes to roll out with his quarterback, so we're just going to quickly send the spy and put him in a bad position. Right? So Hopefully you're starting to see kind of why I think simplicity is so important um, and how I think that, you know, anyone can simplify. Um, but it does it really does come down to you have to start with like a blank slate. You can't just, well, I'm only going to run one formation or I'm going to slowly introduce simplicity. And so, you know, you, you really would. It's best, in my opinion, um, at least this is just how I, I do it. And of course, we get dotted over the top again bad defense by me but the way that i teach it is you really want to start with a blank slate you really do and the biggest reason as to why that is the case is because it allows you to it allows you to start and only add what is most critical so like right here kind of new fullback dive was coming um, I ended up staying in my cover four show too. He was able to able to run on us a little bit there. You're starting to notice like, honestly, like uh, some themes, right? You're noticing that you have to watch out for the solo receiver, right? There's three, cause the, the three scoring drives that he's had have come off the backs of um, hitting us over the top, hitting us over the top with a streak. Right, you've no, that that has been really the the you know the the primary focal point. Now, right there, you see one of a mental mistake. I, you know, lost lost composure. He comes out an onside kick, and I got to be on it and, and make sure that I at least call timeout. So I burn a, a timeout. Not a great move, but it is what it is. And um, anyway, so as you can see, but you've noticed like okay, here's a theme. A theme is that you know he's able to. Maybe one of the themes is that okay, he's able to scramble. Maybe another of the themes is you know the seams, um, you know the vertical threat on this on the solo receiver side has really been the biggest challenge. How do you stop a fade route, basically, right? And so you know defensively now when we start to build our counter play. You know, we, we need to be intentional about thinking th that through or, you know, how we're going to basically, you know, again, just do multiple things right there. That's actually a really, really bad decision by me. And what I should have done was I should have canceled the play action. Um, so he had a, because he's running man coverage, he had about 15 people and a spy. And so, you know, that is what it is. Right here, we're going to spy the safeties, really come down, try to stop this run um, a little bit here. 
And as you can see, when we want to stop the run, we're definitely able to do that. Um, and we're actually going to stay in this defense. And the reason why is because he really likes to... Yeah, he's really like... Mm, that's frustrating. That's not it. And the thing is, that wasn't even a great running call by him. It's just he got lucky. We had him in the backfield. Um, so 24-24 to 24 ball game. Really, we need to hold the three here. Um, it's, it's probably likely that we won't see him pass the ball. I'd be surprised if he did. So we're going to shift now that we're in the goal line here. Uh, we're going to shift down into a little bit more of a run defense. Um, so you'll see right here, just kind of trying to really be intentional about stopping the run. And we're able to get in the backfield and kind of hold that. And really the only adjustment is is instead of running, you know, um, instead of running cover four, we're running, you know, basically cover zero. So like right here you see a little strong close. Um, and good read by him. And he's probably going to shift into that again. I would, if I if I was him, I would probably shift into that. He might come out in goal line. If he comes out in goal line, I'm going to come out in goal line and just try to blow up any fullback dive that he could possibly do. Nope, he's going to stay with that. So we're going to stay with that. Um, we're just going to really try to be super super simple. And we're going to see if he tries to throw his little out rod again. He throws into a hard flat, and Jair Alexander, I don't know. Very unfortunate what just happened. Now, if we come out in the same situation again, I'm trying to think of what we're going to call. We're probably going to call that cover four show two again with the hard flat. Yep, that's exactly what we're going to call it. So we're calling cover four show two. We've got hard flats across the board. And I don't know how he scored. Oh, I don't know how he scored at all. That's frustrating. So he's able to get, I mean, this is probably the second very lucky touchdown um, that we've seen. You know, defensively, it looks like uh, simplicity is not working out too well for us. Um, the most random, you know, kind of things are, are, are really working for this guy. But you know what? It is what it is. Offensively, we've been doing fine. We just made a very massive mistake of trying to scramble into a spy. Uh, was not a great move by me. But we got a nice little kick return here. Got us out. We got plenty of time. We got three minutes, 50 seconds. I really believe our defense is going to be able to stop him. I just, I honestly don't feel like there's anything that he's done in this game that is deserving of 31 points. I really haven't seen anything that really should justify that. Right here, that's kind of, again, these are the glitchy things. When people start running contains like this, this is the thing that you have to watch out for. These glitchy contains um, can just cause some real issues. Once again, just instant sack. You know, I don't know why this exists in this game. This is a ridiculous, a ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous reality that you have to face. The fact that a contain can glitch out five linemen on one side of the field from the nickel 245 is absolutely uh, ridiculous. So right here, get the ball in the hands of Devontae Adams. And I kind of forced that. Um, but here we are, 4th and 12. I have to double team. Uh, really don't have a choice. Uh, but in this situation, we are going to motion out the post um, just to see if we can't hit him. And we need the tight end to release. And Robert Tunyon is going to make the play of the game so far. We're going to take a timeout right there. Just because of the situation. I'm not too worried about him getting the ball back. It's kind of like a crazy little play right there. Again, these contains, you're seeing like just how frustrating, you know, these contains really are. And we're going to release him. Tavon Austin kind of breaking back across. I don't know how his man coverage is doing so well against us, honestly. I really don't. But that's okay. And I mean, his man coverage isn't really the thing that's doing it. It's this, it's this two four five. This two four five is, is is interesting because of how good they can really stop the rollout. That's really what's really helping him. 
but here we're able to get out of the pocket. When we've been able to get out of the pocket, it's not been a very good, you know, situation for him. Um, you know, 14 of 18, 325, not a bad ball game. It's just been mainly like little things. And if you notice that they're running these contains like this, it's actually, you know, this is where you got to say, okay, maybe we should have been doing this all game. We're putting the running back out of the backfield, you know, just because it doesn't make sense to try to roll out into a defense that is waiting for you to roll into them. That's really where his success has come on the defensive side of the ball. So that's something where maybe I should have canceled the play action. Maybe I should have done some other things like that. That probably would have saved us of that fumble. We're able to get a touchdown. And uh, let's go see if we can finish this game off. I mean, this has been a fun game. Even though we've only been running one play on both sides of the ball, what I think you are starting to at least see is, number one, it's actually possible to be competitive or be in a game and be able to do this. But number two um, is is just the reality that you have to you have to execute. And, um, you know, there's some, some common themes of things. When you run one play, it forces only a couple of things to be open. It simplifies what the offense uh, can actually do to the defense. So like right here, um, probably going to see some kind of like, I don't even know what he would run. Runs a crossing route right into my guy once again. Um, you know, and, and that's honestly, that's on me a little bit. He's also been running like like stuff like that. Like I, I don't know what I don't know what would possess somebody to call that run play. Um, like I just don't understand why he's doing some of these things. But anyway, quarter zone throws it right into me again. Now that time his streak didn't work out for him. You see, we're able to have the defense there, and that was exactly I knew he was going to go to that in that situation. You know, he loves to just kind of like flutter up a streak, um, and we did nothing different. We just got our adjustments off. That was it. We literally just got our adjustments off. We had a deep half on that side of the field. Um, you know, that's kind of one of the elements of the cover four show too. And we, we were talking about running that as a cover six. So now we've got an opportunity to be able to go down and score on him. Again, we pretty much ran the same play the entire game. And uh, we might are in a position where we can probably actually win this game. So again, right here, um, stupid, 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 stupid decision right there. You know, again, you have to, he's not changing what he's doing either. Because we're not changing what we're doing He's not changing what he's doing. And so um, that's why it's a good opportunity to just put the running back on a little in route. Something as simple as this right here is probably going to end up winning us the game. And the reason why is because the way that he's calling his plays is actually because of the way that we're calling our plays, it's led him to simplify the way he's calling his plays, which is actually in a disadvantage to him because he can't stop that one adjustment, that one adjustment, Right. Because we've made him have to, we forced him to have to stop some so many things. He's, you know, it within one play, within one play, right? He can't stop us. He literally cannot stop us. We're about to win this ball game, running one play on offense and one play on defense consistently, and just simply executing it. And the reason why I'm excited about that, the reason why I want to talk about this is you're seeing one little adjustment. If I stop rolling out, it takes the contain glitch away. The, the lineman can't do anything to me. Right, so now I'm here, boinked off the off the tight end, and you know what? I mean, we're in a position right here where we can win the ball game. We're we're in a position right here where we can win the ball game. We're just gonna try to like, you know, just kind of close this out a little bit. Obviously, we're double teaming here. We're just kind of watching for the crosser. If the crosser opens up, right there, exactly what we wanted. Touchdown, Packers. Um, and the bunch tight end, you know, pretty much if we take away those two or three bad scrambles, we're probably, you know, we're probably winning this by two to three scores. If we take away those two to three bad scrambles and we have more disciplined user and deep coverage on that solo receiver side, we win this game easy. And that's what I'm getting at when I talk about simplifying. It it exposes the little things. It exposes the little things that you don't do right. And the little things are really typically what actually give up the big one-play touchdowns or the big plays for whatever. It's not the, the fact that your defense is not good. If you've labbed it, if you're running the stuff that I have in the, in the guides, that's good stuff. That's been practiced over and over and over again. Where it's, it, it shows is... You know, are you able to execute it? You know, are you able to actually execute it? That's the big question. 
So like right here, I got to watch the slot up the seam. That's my threat. That's the guy that I've got to watch. So, you know, when I run my defense here, I'm just watching right here because this is where he throws right there, right into quarters, double coverage, easy pick. And now you're seeing the defense do its thing, you know, do its thing. Whatever, all you do is run a streak and just lob it up and pray. This defense will take your lunch money. And you're seeing we ran one play on offense, one play on defense. We're still going to come out with the win. We also learned some things along the way. We learned that if they're going to contain you on the edge, double team the guy and put the running back on on a route so the running back doesn't get in the way of the block. As you see here, nice little double team, easy read right there. Has been very consistent. He should call timeout. He's going to go ahead and do that for us. But you see the simplification of this and why it is such a big deal. So then in certain situations, you can test it, right? Like maybe something like this. Now you do that a couple times, you know, and then you go back to it. Those are some things. If he gets wide, he got wide. Okay, I'm just leaving it. I'm just leaving it every single time. And it results in a nice little dot over the top for an absolute laser against this guy. I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. We literally just ran one play on offense the entire game and dropped 45 points. Probably could have dropped over 50 had we not turned it over twice off of fumbles, off of silly scrambles. But it did expose something. When people are containing out of 2, 4, 5, whatever, you cannot roll out like you normally could. Or maybe they patched it, whatever. So what you've got to do is you've got to adjust, right? So And that's where like our counterplay, we don't want to be rolling out of the pocket with our counterplay. But thanks for watching. If you want the exact offense and defense, the full version, not just the one play versions, but the full versions of those are available in the description. You can get my full entire offense for 15 bucks, and you can get my full entire defense for $15 as well.